Yes, yes. Welcome once again, everybody. Cannabis News with Joe Claire. It's August 31st, 2018. The end of another glorious week here at the Marijuana Times. Check us out at MarijuanaTimes.org. Click the video tab. You'll find this show. There's also a bunch of great articles, writers, links to our social media networks, and more. MarijuanaTimes.org. Today, we got two stories about Michigan, both medical marijuana and recreational marijuana. And check out what's going on out in Utah when it comes to the medical marijuana battle out there. A pretty, uh, a pretty intense battle for, you know, in terms of the history of medical marijuana and, and the fights that have gone on to get medical marijuana passed in various states. Very few have faced opposition like they're facing in Utah. Uh, obviously, the Mormon church is a main reason for that, or one of the main reasons for that. I would say the main reason, but I could be wrong. But I would give the bulk of the problem to the Mormon church and, and, and people who feel like, well, I'll get into it coming up here on the show. <laughs> I'll do my whole spiel. I'm going to save my spiel for later when it is spiel time. <laughs> First, before we get into all that, of course, Cannabis News is brought to you by Nature Side and their organic, all-natural pesticides. Check out nature-side.com. Side is spelled C-I-D-E. They are awesome. They are a sponsor of this show, a longtime sponsor of the show. If you're a cannabis cultivator in a state where it's legal, you want to be grow, grow safe and poison free. You want to be regulatory compliant. You don't want to use harmful pesticides and chemicals on your grow. For all of those reasons, you need to check out NatureSide. Nature-Side.com, a proud sponsor of Cannabis News. They are awesome. Go check them out. Don't spray harmful don't spray anything on your cultivation, your cannabis cultivation. It's going to be harmful for people to ingest. That's nuts. Stop doing that. If you're doing that, stop it. You're doing it wrong. Go to nature-side.com. This first story from Jason Sander of AmerijuanaTimes.org. Michigan lawmakers consider medical cannabis home delivery. Yes, that's right. Medical cannabis patients in Michigan could soon be able to order their plant medicine online and have it delivered to their doorstep, the Bureau of Medical Marijuana Regulation would permit licensed deliverers called uh, provision centers to bring medical cannabis to homes of registered patients. Although this might be the first time Michigan residents are hearing of this, it's not new to state lawmakers. This isn't a brand new issue, said Andrew Brisbo, director of the State Bureau of Medical Marijuana Regulation. We heard about it even during the promulgation of the emergency rules, uh, which went into effect a couple years ago in Michigan to kind of try to rein in regulations in Michigan, for many years in Michigan, if you didn't follow what was going on with the medical marijuana program up, up there, there's a lot of headbutting, a lot of conflict between law enforcement and caregivers and patients. There's a lot of confusion over the law. They bring out a whole new set of rules because that's what politicians and lawmakers do when there's a problem. They say, well, we must have more rules. One of those rules prohibits, prohibits home delivery, but uh, under this idea, license of a provision center, under the license of a provision center, a delivery driver would be able to bring up to three patients, their cannabis medicine per trip, and there would be a weekly and monthly cap on how much can be distributed per individual location because, you know, too much medicine, it's, it's also a problem. <laughs> I don't understand. And as Jason points out in this, sh this, this story, they're, the, all of it's arbitrary. They're just picking numbers for no reason. Why, why three patients? Uh, why uh, a certain cap over a, a different cap? Why caps on medicine at all? I don't know, but that's the way, again, as I've said many times on the show, we've got to fight for every inch of what it just it took. It was relatively easy for the government to pass prohibition, as I've said before, and two fell swoops, really. The main one being the Control of Substances Act uh, almost 50 years ago now. And to get it back, to get any semblance of freedom back, any semblance of our rights back when it comes to cannabis, we have to fight inch by inch, battle by battle. Now just so many battles across the country going on. This is one of them. Now they're talking about maybe allowing medicine to be delivered to people and maybe, but there's going to be caps on it and there's going to be regulations and they're going to have GPS and they're going to be tracked everywhere and, you know, there's all kinds of stupid ar arbitrary rules and I don't know. It's not, uh, it's not the best of uh, situations, but as I've said again many, many times before, most of us will accept it because it's better than prohibition. We're judging against the standard of prohibition instead of the standard of what it was before it became illegal. It was just a plant. This next story from Fox 13 now. 
Lawmakers.com. Lawmakers trying to block medical marijuana from the ballot, or lawsuit, sorry, trying to block medical marijuana from the ballot in Utah, drops the reference to LDS beliefs. Of course, the LDS is the Church of Latter-day Saints, which is a.k.a. the um, Mormon Church, which is the dominant force in Utah, as many of you know. A lawsuit seeking to keep Proposition 2 off the ballot this November has been amended, dropping references to medical marijuana offending members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Fox 13 reported on the lawsuit uh, filed by Walter Plum III, which we, of course, talked about on this show. He's went on and on about how, you know, well, he doesn't think recreational marijuana should be legal, but he does, he does agree with if it's, uh, you know, approved uh, by, a, you know, a doctor and, and, and a pharmacist and, and it's all, you know, very tightly regulated and all that, as if it mattered what this guy's opinion was or as if it should matter what this guy's opinion is on whether or not people should have access to medical marijuana or even be able to vote on it in Utah. He's just going on and on like, well, I believe this. And I don't think this is right. And I don't think we should do this. None of which matters. As I said at the time, who cares? Who are you? Walter Plum the third? You're nobody. You are nobody. What gives you the right to tell medical marijuana patients, or anyone for that matter, who is not infringing on the rights of anyone else, what they can and cannot do in their own home? That's ridiculous. You are nobody. You are nothing. You're a moron who is forcing your moronic ideology and your moronic religion, in this case, because he's leaning heavily on the Mormon church, and they find it repugnant that people would use marijuana at all. No, and, you know, the guy, whoever the weird guy was who invented Mormonism... Uh, less than a couple hundred years ago, he would be very offended by this. No one cares. Shut up. You're nobody. Walter Plum III, you are nobody. You have no power. You have nothing. You have no right to tell anyone what they can do in their own home. I'm so sick of these people who somehow equate. I know where it comes from. That's what we've been taught. Somehow equate your own personal morality into what laws should be. No, that's not the way it works. Laws should only affect people who infringe on the rights of other people. Beyond that, it's a bad law. If any single law that makes a criminal out of someone who's not infringing on the rights of anyone else is a bad law, it should be ignored. Completely ignored. Medical marijuana is going to pass in Utah, and this guy doesn't like it. Oh, no, too bad. Cry me a river. Let me get out my tiny little violin for Walter Plum III and his problem with medical marijuana. So What? Anyway, the lawsuit dropped the religious stuff. Focused on the rights of property owners to claims to not be allowed to deny housing to medical cannabis users. Plum also dropped Drug Safe Utah from the lawsuit after it claimed it was not involved. Uh, now his new group plaintiff is his new group is a plaintiff. Truth about Prop Two. Uh, oh, I got, I'm done with this story. I'm done with this story. I'm done with Walter Plum the Third. I'm done with people who believe that whatever their personal beliefs are should somehow be translated into laws that affect other people. Once we crossed that line, that was it. That was it. Once we gave into the fact that, oh, well, if you know, if you have this opinion on something, that maybe that should be a law. No. It's not the way laws work. That's not the way they should work. But it is the way they do work. And that's why we have the problems that we have today. Back to Michigan for this final story. This is from MLive.com. Recreational marijuana will be on the ballot as Proposal 1. So those of you in Michigan who are going to vote this November 6th on recreational marijuana, you're voting on Proposal 1. It's kind of an odd name, but it is what it is. Michigan voters will officially see Proposal 1 on their ballots November 6th, asking them if they want to legalize recreational marijuana for adults 21 and over in the state. The Board of State canvassers assigned the number Thursday. After the coalition to regulate marijuana like alcohol garnered enough signatures to place the question on the ballot, the coalition is made up of multiple cannabis activist groups, the ACLU and drug policy reform groups. So Michigan is a big vote coming up in November. Uh, the story goes on to talk about lawmakers had a chance to take action on recreational marijuana, but they did not. They're leaving it up to the voters this November to see uh, if recreational marijuana passes, again, if you're in Michigan, Proposal 1 is what you're voting on. Now, we have a little video here from MLive.com describes, you know, what's at stake when it comes to this proposal, some of the limits, all of that. For those of you watching the uh, video, of course, you can read along. This is one of those videos where there's no narration. It's just reading. You're reading a video, which I really don't understand, but it is what it is. So for those of you with the audio-only version of the show and are not seeing the video, I will narrate myself. 
So I'm, I, I'm, I just, I'm trying to get the information out there. These people are making it hard, but I will deal with what I had to deal with, which is this video from MLive.com. Michigan voters will decide whether or not to legalize recreational marijuana in the November 6th election. If the measure passes, here's what recreational marijuana use will be like in Michigan. You must be 21 years old to possess, use, or sell marijuana. Uh, consuming or smoking marijuana public will still be illegal in Michigan if Proposal 1 passes. There will be no driving a car, boat, or other vehicle while under the influence of cannabis. Of course, there will be various tests and whatnot. Uh, you can possess up to an, uh, two and a half ounces of marijuana and up to 15 grams of marijuana concentrate can't have more than 10 ounces at home. You can give it to two and a half ounces as a gift. You can grow up to 12 plants at home for personal use. You notice these are all fairly robust limits when compared to other recreational marijuana uh, legalization measures around the country. Two and a half ounces, 10 ounces at home, 12 plants, all that is, uh, is definitely higher than most other states or even uh, have even attempted. Continuing the video. Plants must be grown in a secure, restricted area, as is the case in most, places, most states. Companies can still discipline, fire, or refuse to hire employees over marijuana use. Well, that's not really good. But it is what it is. Landlords can prohibit tenants from smoking on their property, an issue we just talked about, that they have a big deal, a big problem with in Utah. No possessing or consuming marijuana on school property. Recreational marijuana will be taxed. There will be a 6% sales tax and a 10% excise tax paid by the retailer and passed on to the consumer. The legislation was drafted by the Coalition to Regulate Marijuana Like Alcohol, a collection of multiple cannabis activist groups, the ACLU, and drug policy reform groups, as I've already said, but they put in the video as well. The new law will require the state to regulate and license a new industry. Uh, the medical marijuana program will remain in place. So thank you to M Live for that um, very graphically intense but lacking in narration a look at marijuana <laughs> recreational marijuana legalization in michigan proposal one go vote on it november 6th thanks everybody for checking us out again the week's done go enjoy your weekend we'll see you next week check out marijuanatimes.org for all the great stuff that i describe in every episode all the great articles the videos click the video tab to find this show subscribe on apple Podcasts for the audio only version of the show subscribe to youtube and vimeo you can find us on there as well Search the Marijuana Times, continue to share and like and comment on the videos, and spread the truth about cannabis with this show. Thanks for watching and listening, and we'll see you next week on Cannabis News. <laughs> <laughs>